Welcome to another Fear No Fix video. Today we're working on a 2004 Ford F-150 with a 5.4 liter engine. Today we're going to be replacing the fan clutch and you may need to do this if you have a P1285 or a P1299 code. If your fan clutch is on its way out, you might notice that your fan isn't spinning or it's spinning too fast. Maybe your engine's overheating, but you've already ruled out your thermostat and your water pump. You know that maybe you've got heat in the cabin, so you know coolant's circulating, but for some reason you're still overheating. This isn't a particularly hard fix, but it is going to take a little bit of time and you're either going to need a special Ford tool or you're going to need to make something of your own. But even that's not too bad. So let's get started. The radiator fan is inside this plastic shroud right here. Before we get to work removing it, we're going to disconnect the battery. Now we'll remove the inlet ducting. Remove the 10 millimeter bolt on the back by the power steering reservoir. Then lift up and pull out. Now we're going to remove this air deflector here over the fan shroud. There are four plastic trim clips. Uh, these trim clips can usually be removed with a Phillips screwdriver. You just insert it and turn counterclockwise. These ones are kind of a little bit seized and once you get the screwdriver in there, you start turning, they just kind of flatten out and the plastic just is old and weak. So we're just gonna take a pick or a screwdriver or just about anything works. I'm just gonna work it in there, pry up a little bit, and then we'll use a trim clip tool or if you have a uh, screwdriver, just about anything works. And now we'll just lift the air deflector up and we'll put it aside. Now that the inlet ducting's out of the way, we can see the fan clutch, which is right here, the radiator fan, and this right here is our water pump pulley. So we need to disconnect the fan clutch right here from the pulley. This is held on with about 44 foot pounds, but it's probably gonna be a little tight if it's 10 plus years old. The trick here is that we need to stop this pulley from rotating while we turn this giant nut right here. Hey Chris, I think you need a special tool for that. Yeah, so you actually, theoretically you need two special tools. You need one to hold the water pump pulley steady and one to break the fan clutch off. These tools, pretty expensive. I'm a giant cheapskate. I'm not gonna spend that kind of money on these tools that we're only gonna use once. So there are a couple of different options we can have. If you're lucky, you might have a parts store nearby who will lend you the tools, maybe they'll rent you the tools. Our parts store is here. They don't really have this stuff lying around, so I'm gonna have to kind of make do. I could go buy an aftermarket thing. You can get them online, but once again, I don't really wanna spend a bunch of money on a tool that I'm only ever gonna use once and it's just gonna sit in the corner forever. So this is where you kind of do a little bit of uh, improvisation to try to figure out just what you have lying around that can hold everything steady while you break that torque off. For holding the water pump pulley steady, you might be able to use something like a rubber strap wrench. This didn't work for me, it just slid, pulley just kept spinning. Maybe you can jam something in one of the other pulleys because our accessory belt is still on. So that's gonna hold everything kind of steady. You might get lucky and the compression of the engine might be enough to break the torque. We're not that lucky because nobody ever really is. Other than that, maybe you could put some channel locks on maybe one of the pulleys to hold them steady, but that might not work either. You might slip or if you put it on the belt, you might damage the belt itself. So here's what we came up with. So here's what we're gonna use. This is just an old wrench I had lying around the garage. Uh, it's probably for working on bicycles or something like that. I just drilled this hole in the end of it. It's just big enough that it can fit over one of the four bolts on the water pump pulley. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna put this over one of the bolts on the bottom. Then we're gonna have one of the other bolts right here. And then when we're trying to break the torque, the pulley's gonna to wanna to turn this way. We're gonna wedge this end of the wrench on the tensioner for the belt. And then that's gonna hold everything steady and stop it from turning while we break that nut this way. So what about that 36 millimeter nut on the fan clutch, Chris? So that's supposed to be another Ford special tool, but we can make do without it. Uh, like you said, the most obvious thing would just be to go out and get a 36 millimeter wrench, but that's gonna be kind of pricey and I'm probably never gonna use it again. So I'm gonna go with a pipe wrench. This 
one was my grandfather's and it's about 50 years old. If you don't have pipe wrench lying around, it might be worth buying one. At least you'll have another use for it in the future. It's probably gonna be more useful than a 36 millimeter wrench. This is a little too short though, and I can't really put the torque I need on it, so I'm gonna get a cheater. And here it is. This is the extension arm out of an engine hoist that I had in my garage, and it's the only thing I could find that would fit over the wrench. So this is gonna be overkill, but it's gonna work. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is fix our water pump pulley in place. There isn't gonna be any specific procedure here. It all depends on what kind of tool you're using, if you got the official tool from a parts store or if you're just improvising. The core of it is we just don't want this pulley to turn while we're breaking this torque. So if you're using some sort of ad lib tool like ours, we're just gonna slide it right over one of the bolts, in this case, the one on the bottom. Then we're gonna rest it on the bottom of one of the other ones, the next one over. And then I'm just taking this wrench that I'm using and I'm wedging it back here on the belt tensioner. Once we get all this stuff out of the way, we'll have a better view of our work area and I'll show you what we're doing with this special tool. Now we're coming in with our pipe wrench. And we're gonna break that torque. Now we should just be able to spin it out by hand. And then we're just gonna lean this back in the shroud. Just be careful when you're leaning it back that you don't damage any of the fins on your radiator. To make things easier, we're gonna remove this support bracket for the intake ducting. Just two 13 millimeter bolts. Now we remove two eight millimeter bolts that are holding the fan shroud on. Now that the fan shroud's loose, we're just gonna pull up on it. We're gonna rotate the driver's side just a little to make a path for it. And then while we remove it, just reach inside and hold onto the fan so it doesn't drag across the radiator. Now that we got a bit of a better view, I can show you what we were doing a couple of seconds ago. We took the special tool, we put it around this bolt on the bottom, we wedged it on the bottom of this bolt here, and then we just braced it on the tensioner there. Then when we came in with our pipe wrench and we were rotating this whole thing counterclockwise, this bolt was pushing right here, wedged, nothing moves, everything was steady. Now that we have the fan out, we're gonna remove these four 13 millimeter bolts. Then we're gonna spin this over. This is already a little loose, but if you find that the clutch is kind of jammed in there a little bit, just tap it off the floor. There's our old clutch, and here's our brand new shiny one. And now we'll torque all four to 13 foot-pounds. And now we're ready to reinstall. Now we're gonna reinstall the fan shroud with the fan inside. While you're doing this, hold on to the fan. You don't want it to fall backwards and damage the radiator fins. While you're installing the shroud, just make sure that the plastic tabs on the bottom of each side of the shroud fall into the slots on the radiator. Now we're gonna install our two eight millimeter bolts.
torque to 53 inch pounds or 4.41 foot pounds, or just make it tight. You may have noticed our new water pump. A lot of the time people replace the water pump and the fan clutch as a pair since they're connected and you gotta remove one to get to the other. So we went ahead and did both at the same time, but you can watch our video on our water pump repair at the link below. Now we're gonna install the fan and clutch on the water pump. So we'll just spin it clockwise slowly until the threads bite. Then we'll just spin it on. And then we'll go get our fancy Ford special tool. Same as before, we're gonna secure the pulley. So as we turn this, this is gonna press up on the tensioner and hold everything together. And now we're gonna grab our pipe wrench and tighten it up. The official torque spec is 41 foot-pounds. Obviously we're not getting a torque wrench on this, so I'm just gonna use my cheater and I'm just gonna be firm, but not too firm with it. You don't have to be too careful because this is a really large nut, so it's probably not too likely you're gonna go spinning this off. So we'll just put some torque on it. And call it good. Now we're gonna reinstall the intake tubing support bracket. And these are both 13 millimeter nuts. These are both supposed to be torqued to 89 inch pounds, but I don't think anybody watching this video is actually gonna do that. Now we'll replace our air deflector and we're going to make sure all of our plastic tabs are popped out. Insert each one and press down. Reinstall our intake ducting first on the driver's side fender, then angled down slightly, we push it into the air box and rotate it in. And now we'll insert our 10 millimeter bolt. And torque it up to a theoretical 80 inch pounds or 6.7 foot pounds. And now finally, we'll hook up the battery. And we're done. All right, everything's buttoned back up and the fan's working perfectly and we're good to go. If this video helped you, please like the video and subscribe to our channel and make sure you click that bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. And until next time, fear no fix.